Good evening everybody and welcome to the studio this evening. Thank you all for joining. <coughs> I'm just setting up but uh, before I do the setup for carving I have a little adjustment to make to something that I did the other day. A very kind gentleman uh, sent me uh, this uh, clasp. Oops, a daisy. Let me just turn the volume off on that. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now what to just do here is make a slight change to this <coughs> because it has this on the end of it and I want the other colour So I'm just going to get it out of the bag here. I might as well use some brand new tools that I've got. And I tell you these are, I've just got these and even just holding them. They are absolutely fantastic compared to the ones that I got the other day. So, just <clears throat> won't take long doing this, then we'll be back to the carving. All I need to do is take that off and replace it with this. That is so much nicer. <laughs> if I can get hold of the end. Yep. There we go. <coughs> so I shall put that one away. And I happen to have found an escapee. which I'll just put in there as well. It can then go in there and I can put it back into this bag here, this little bag of secrets. Which I shall now also put away. <coughs> And now we can start carving. So, put the tools to one side, get out the carving mat, and move my keyboard to one side, which of course knocks everything all over the place. 
day. Yeah, that's okay. Unfortunately, I have limited space in the studio, which means everything's in, in each other's way. But we shall see how we go. I am hoping very much so that later this year I will have a much bigger studio, which will be absolutely fantastic. So, um, we are going to, we're going to hope that that graphics tablet doesn't fall down. <coughs> right, we're going to do some more carving on this dragon. Um, essentially, we're just going to start to drop everything down in terms of shape. And I'm actually wondering whether to put the fourth finger in there because it, it <coughs> it's actually got four fingers or five, if you like, human hand. Because uh, the, the thumb is up here on both sides. And so we've got uh, one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three. This one's out of, you can't see it. But I'm just wondering whether to put it in there. Um, it'll probably show, yeah, let's have a go at doing it. <coughs> so, I need a very small, well, a small gouge. And <coughs> let's see if I actually need to clamp the work at the moment. If I can avoid clamping it, it'll be a little bit easier to move around. So at this stage, this is just sort of indications. It's not a final final calf position or anything like that. The finger bones have got to be a lot uh, a lot thinner. But I can uh, I can adjust them as we get uh, get closer down to a final a final depth. Now the wing. The highest point of the wing is, is here. Let me just have a look at this. Yeah. What I am doing is I'm just studying studying my reference picture. Must be the glasses. Um, yeah, I'm going to assume the wings are back but curled over. So he's holding his arms more or less out straight. But then the fingers, so it, it's kind of like that for a wing. You know, obviously I can't bend my hand like that, but sort of, sort of backwards, so it come, it's, it's coming up and over. Yeah, just so sort of trying to sort of you know keep it keep in mind just what it is exactly it looks like, because that's in, that's important because that's the shape we're trying to get to. As I as I you know, lower this down further into the into the board I need to bear in mind just uh, exactly how I want things to look so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give me myself a little bit more depth of the around these feet So 
I basically just carve um, carve some more space. So I'm starting, you know, starting if you like another layer, going down a little bit more. So I'm going to carve, carve the background away from the, the leg and then I can carve the leg down, then I can carve the body down and, I can, you know, and, and so on. Sometimes the, 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 the fact that the wood splits slightly comes in useful as it just did then. Layers are good evening, welcome to the studio this evening. I am very well, thank you, and I trust you are as well. Legend Seder, good afternoon, good evening, welcome to the studio also. Nice to have you both around. So all I'm doing with all I'm doing now with the dragon is I've established the rough sort of shape on the surface. So now it's a case of uh, basically making you know reducing the surface, making it sink. And as I do that, applying more of the more of the shaping. So we get a a much more three-dimensional object at the end of it. That's why that's odd. I've got the chiselling upside down. There we go. It's um, these. This this is a flat chisel, and uh, the cutting face is this silver one here, uh, which is at the angle. So. You know, whilst most people think you use a chisel this way, you actually use it the other way. And uh, it was upside down, and so it didn't quite feel right, because I got the, the handle as a shaped handle. Now then. Okay. So if I cut you off there, there we go. Okay, oh good. Well, the better you do now, the less you'll have to do later. Um, I may need to clamp this piece down. Yep, yeah, let's clamp it before it starts uh, getting a problem. It's odd when you're looking down on the clamp you've got to turn it backwards and just sometimes thinking what's backwards is quite <laughs> challenging.
there. It's not tightly clamped, it just, just holds the piece. I mean, the, the non-slip mat's doing quite a bit of the work as well. It just holds the piece so that I can... Uh, I don't have to hold it down with my hand, I can just work on it without having to worry too much about it slipping. I mean, if I put enough force on, I'll slide the thing around, but I don't intend to put that much force onto it. There's no, there's no need to use heavy duty force, I'm not trying to remove a lot of wood in one go. I'm just, you know, as, as I describe it, feeling my way down to the final shape. Which means you know, a small amount of wood at a time comes out. kind of using the fact that the wood is splitting slightly to my advantage just around here. Otherwise I'd have a terrible job getting into the corner. Try and keep that clean. There we go. That's deep enough now just to help me understand where it is. So we'll carve some more around the tail here. I am debating with myself quite how 3D I want to make the tail. Um, I could literally make it stand off the piece. Um, it will be relatively fragile if I do that though. And the chances are if you pushed on it like this you'd break the tail off. Um, so I'm not quite sure whether I actually want to do that. or whether to leave um, material underneath the tail. Which then supports it, and it's still um, fragile in, in sort of the up and down direction, but not, not the pressing down direction. Now, although in the reference diagram, this reference diagram, reference picture, there's three levels of rock. I'm not fantastically bothered where they are. I can sort that out afterwards. Thank you very much for that, uh, the legend said that. Yeah, I, um, it's it's you know, feeling was kind of fine if you like it was just the um, the stomach muscles that earlier on wouldn't let me do it because I was you know pulling and pushing on the wound sites if you like uh, when you tighten your muscles and your stomach to carve even supporting my arms it surprised me um, and that was the painful bit but um, yeah I was doing this list last night I was okay with it thank you though for for that um, yeah, I could do that. I did that actually with a ribbon where I carved a ribbon which sort of came up and went up, went down. I could do that. Um, then it would be in compression, which um, if somebody pushed on it, it wouldn't be uh, quite as bad. Um, 
Uh, but as uh, Leia says, you could always leave it attached. It kind of... What I might actually do is... Um, I mean, I was thinking about, if you like, having it in mid-air. So, you know, it comes off the back uh, and you can see light underneath. But what I might do is wrap it around the rock because it is a pinnacle that it's stood on. Uh, and then there's, uh, you know, maybe just the tip off, something like that. Or um, if it's wrapped around the rock, at least to this point here, then, you know, that all that's supported. Worst is this area here. Uh, has a small, well it doesn't matter whether it's small or large, unsupported, or I can just undercut it a little bit, so you, know, you kind of, um, how do I describe undercut? If you sort of, your pieces like this, I can just, uh, you know, uh, my fingers are the block of wood if you like here, and this is, this is the tail, what I can do is carve this away like that, and the same, so I create that sort of shape underneath. So it comes down towards a point, which is which is called an undercut. So when you're looking at it, unless you get close to it, it kind of looks like it's it's floating in air, but it's actually on a pillar of material. If that uh, if that makes sense. Uh, Eddie Fall Guy, good evening. <laughs> I'll tell you in a moment, Lazar, if you haven't heard. Um, uh, your um, envelope arrived, Eddie. Thank you very much. And uh, so did mine. They're nice, are these? <laughs> They're really nice. I've got. Um, I just I used them tonight to to uh, attach your. Um, the contents of your envelope um, and uh, it's it's rather amazing for some reason because my wife has seen these um, she's she seems to think I might be making jewelry don't know how she comes to think about that but I'm gonna encourage you to think that and that way then we'll surprise her when we get on holiday but um, and I also got, I also tried these. These are lovely and soft. These are a little bit awkward to hold, but they seem to put more pressure on because of the parallel jaws. So I, I thought I'd try some. So, but they're, they're a bit slippy, so I might end up having to put like um, a bit of uh, self amalgamating tape, like a rubber coating on them just to, to stop them sliding. But they, um, they feel like they've put an awful lot of pressure under these if if I wanted them to do so. But they are really nice. I like them. As soon as I put my hands on them, I liked them. So um, to anybody else, it's worth... Yeah, they're not that expensive, but it's worth investing in them rather than the ones that I got because my hands are still sore from the other pliers. Um... Laser, what um, Thursday last week I had uh, some uh, skin uh, dark patches of skin um, pigment um, column molds in the UK but dark patches of skin pigment re re removed on my front as a preventative measure and uh, so I've got stitches and things like that on in various places on my front 
Uh, so the wounds are from a surgical procedure. Not from uh, doing anything with a chisel or anything like that. Oh, and uh, well, I assume you uh, you check Twitch private messages, Eddie. I um, I don't check them that often. Um, I did send you one last night. I noticed in a, uh, one of the suppliers had some like uh, cogs uh, shapes cog shaped rings if you want to describe them that way that I thought you know might be useful to incorporate for your uh, car um, show yes Eddie thanks it arrived it arrived safely I've put it on um, would you like to see what it looks like with the right uh, with the right color I shall um, I shall go get it in just a moment Let me just carve this bit away. I'll go pick it pick it out of the container. Oh, and the curved tip ones are really nice as well. <laughs> so, I've spent all my money for this month. <laughs> now then, took them down there. Hopefully safe, but not safe enough that I forget where they are. But there you go. Perfect match. So thank you, uh, thank you very much for that. And it looks, uh, it looks, it looks really nice just for what was left over. Okay, so I, di I didn't check uh, my uh, Twitch mes messages, but you have a bank manager viewing some stuff you might be about to buy. Oh, <laughs> the bank manager. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm assuming <laughs> you mean the same bank manager as I'm thinking about. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, yeah, you had me, you had me thinking there for a minute. Good evening, 3D Block. Welcome to the studio this evening. Right. Uh, yep. You know what? It's my dragon. Let make let's make life easy for myself. What I'm just doing is adjusting his um, heel. to give me a little bit more 
space between his heel and his, his uh, tail which should mean I can get this chisel in that space now which I couldn't before which means that it's a lot easier to get in there Oops, it's interesting. Uh, you might not have seen that, but I did. Just as I was moving, leaving this, I noticed a little bit of wood is starting to lift. Which means it's loose now. Uh, so I've got to remember to carve that heel down, but it just, uh, that's one of the... Uh, one of the things with this wood is a, you know, it's, it's nice and easy to carve, but it does split very easily. I may actually increase the... Tell you what, where's it gone for? Let's actually carve that off, because that way I'll remember it's, it's gone. And I'll work around it rather than suddenly finding um, a piece of wood at final. You know, if I thought, hey, that's great, I'll leave it where it is, and then suddenly finding it um, falls off. Yeah, it did indeed. It did indeed. <laughs> partly, <laughs> partly because I've been talking about, uh, uh, was talking with, uh, well, I've been talking with my wife about banks and things just before the um, the stream. So it took a little while for it to click. I was I was thinking along a completely a different tact. Right, okay, um, so now I can take the whole leg down a little bit, a little bit further. So yeah, the the instant I did actually the instant I took these out of the packaging and just went like that. Um, I thought I want to do some. More. I, I want to try them out. I want. <laughs> I've done exactly two. I've done exactly two rings with them, and uh, I I want more. <laughs> I want to try them. I want to play. But I am not, uh, I am, well, I'm going to be away uh, for a couple of weeks from next week. Uh, so unfortunately there will be no, no streaming, um, but I, uh, yeah, it also means that there's no point in me buying anything. Not that I can afford to do so this month now. So I don't, I can't get to play with them just yet.
No, that's what goes. Okay. Okay, now having done that, I can now carve the, uh, the wings down more. Um, because the wings are in... Hmm, the wings are below the arms. The arms are about the top third of the body. And then we've got the things... Yeah, I'm not. I, I looked at them. I, I I thought about them. Uh, you know, for for you in that particular thing, and um, for that particular reason, and I'm not. I'm not sure whether I actually like them. But you know, it's some to some extent, it's not what you like. It's what the uh, people are going to um, buy them like. That new toy can't play struggle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to say that out loud to understand it for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose you'd get a couple of PSI out of that, but... Um, Good job you didn't uh, you didn't resort to cans or, or um, yeah yeah my the the very 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 first airbrush I ever had actually it was a badger um, but it was a, a real it was um externally mixed single action plastic airbrush uh, no it wasn't was it badger it might have been badger it might have been humble I can't remember now. Um, you go through cans in about 10 seconds flat. Um, you know, I, that was my first experience of uh, airbrushing, but I realised I was, you know, it was the tools, not me. But so it didn't actually put me off, although I didn't. Um, it was another 20, 20 odd years before I, um, or even longer, uh, before I actually did it for real. So I've still got it somewhere up in the loft. It possibly would work now because I've got uh, a couple of compressors I can stick it on. Yeah, some people even try using car tyres, but then that just contaminates the paint and all sorts. Yeah, there wasn't. I remember the, the, the sort of two shape, two sizes of cans. I mean, I don't actually know. Well, I suppose people must have bought them, but I mean, even a big. A, a big can, a big can. <laughs> um, you know, you, you could barely paint the outs, you know, like undercoat the outside of a, a small model with it. You know, you you know, just to paint that, you'd use a complete can. Just to overall, you know, dust the whole lot. You'd use a complete can. It's kind of like, how on earth does anybody use that? You know, just. 
Oh, well, I don't understand. You know, it's I can't see many people do. Couldn't see many people buying it. Even back then, the cans were expensive. Uh, mine was red, I think, but yeah, with a um, plastic trigger um, on the. Uh, it is in the loft somewhere. It, it came in a nice black plastic box. <laughs> Yeah, with a thing screw on the bottom, glass jar on the bottom. It took a takes a heck of a lot, and of course the the PSI rating goes down really quickly. Um, you need something like a truck tire, but then you've got all the contaminants in the um, yeah you know, the rubber basically and bits and stuff in the in the tire, which make it not very good. Oh, maybe so then. Or maybe I just, you know, just didn't know what I was doing, but... Or maybe it just wasn't a very good airbrush, but yeah, it, it, it can just disappeared without... Uh... That's that's not too bad, I suppose. Um, but I'm assuming you're talking about so two foot or so boat. Usual sort of power boat things. Uh, well, that's not bad actually then if you manage to get that much out of it I, I didn't seem to ever to be able to do that but you yeah, know so all, all it did for me was go well you know I can't afford these cans I, you know, it's not the right thing and I, I need a compressor and I can't afford a compressor so it um, just got put to one side when I came back to it I um, you know, bought a, a proper uh, dual action airbrush and a proper compressor when I think about it I kind of spent a heck of a lot of money not knowing whether I'd actually like doing it or not because um, you know they, it, it, it's uh, it's a I'm gonna say it's a proper compressor from the point of view of it's just quite a bit of air uh, and it's got a tank um, it's actually one of the air water compressors you know but at least I knew it would work rather than a cheap one it's it's not one of the little diaphragm compressors it's a proper um, piston compressor And I do have a, a big, and I mean a big, <laughs> compressor in the garage, uh, which uh, which drives the um, the rotary tool when I want to use it. Also drives the um, the spray gun when I want to paint the fence. But uh, it's surprising just how much air you get through. With uh, with those rotary tools, and it's amazingly difficult to find compressors that are, that will um, supply enough air for long enough. Hmm. No, he's never used one before. I think he's waiting. For, uh, I think one of his viewers has promised to um, promised to send him an airbrush. I'm not sure whether that includes compressors and things like that or uh, I'm just going to restart my Twitch screen not, I'm not going to affect the, the stream just re restarting the preview window because it had a picture frozen on it which I didn't want um, so I'm not sure whether he's, he's, he realises he's going to need a compressor and a fairly decent compressor. Um, so it could be quite fun to watch him. Uh. Oh, you're going to have fun with water droplets. I'm assuming you've done them before already, but... Um, Because you'll be needing to use solvent paint for that. 
Uh, unless, of course, you're going to actually paint the water droplets rather than using real water. Um, yeah, he's, well, he's... Mm, yeah, he, he, he doesn't believe in painting things until he's constructed them as well. So he's, he, he doesn't uh, believe in painting them um, either on the spruce or, uh, uh, or, or when they've been cut off. So he's, he's putting it all together, then he's going to spray it, uh, then he's going to paint it. And I can imagine that's going to be uh, fun for him. Because um, he also thinks that all his, you know, if, if he gets it over one of the moving joints, he's just going to be able to run a knife blade down there. And it'll free up the joint. Uh, yeah, I had hopes. Great, uh, great videos, those. You'll um, want to have windows. Well, I was going to say you'll want to have windows open. Because, <laughs> um, of course, you'll have to use solvent sprays, but you might be used to that. Um, okay. Never tried it before. I, I Neither have I, to be honest, but I... Um, I probably whatever because I don't like well I don't really want to use solvent paints um, mainly because of the smell my wife is allergic to some solvent or other we don't know what it is uh, and I mean to the point of anaphylactic shock and having to take adrenaline and be in hospital so I'm kind of avoiding the solvents but um, the other thing is Solvents can be hard on, on airbrushes, so uh, I prefer the water-based stuff, which means actually painting water droplet effects rather than using um, uh, solvent paints. I suppose in theory you can do it the other way as well. You can use you could use um, a drop of maybe some, something like isopropyl alcohol, and then and that's water that that'll absorb water. I was trying to think of a solvent that you could use as the, the water droplets and then spray acrylic uh, water-based paints onto them because that would work the same way and possibly wouldn't wouldn't have as much solvent smell. I'm thinking of it for me. But there again. Mm. Heat lamp, yeah. You can actually even use... Um, uh, a hair dryer or uh, a heat gun, but you just have to be far enough away that you don't disturb the water droplets. Heat lamp, of course, would do it, because of course there's no um, uh, no air movement. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> there is air movement, but not much with uh, with heat lamps. I've forgotten what the last video I was watching of Ed's. I do follow him on, on YouTube. And uh, I forgot what it was, but I recall f thinking, that's really interesting or really fascinating. And I can't remember what it was now. Have you seen... I um, don't think he's, he sh he's done one, or he's shown one piece. Uh, an American flag. Which... Look, as, as he moved the piece, the the um, the flag looked to ripple. I'd love to know how that was done. Uh, yeah, I don't really want to uh, build up. I mean, the 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 one nice thing about the solvents is, um, of course, is the. Um, the transparents, the uh, the candies, they you know the 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 candy colours are, are are absolutely fantastic. 
That's that's the only tempting thing for me uh, for solvents will be to uh, to use candies. So when uh, when somebody comes out with a a dye based um, water based paint, that will be absolutely amazing if they can get that same same effect. I'm taking the wing membranes down here. Uh, what I'll then do is lower lower the arms down as well, at least in this area, uh, and then I can lower the and do the same on the other side. Then I can lower the body. I can afford to sort of just um, do it like a chamfer here and leave the wings till a little bit later but knowing me I'll probably come back and uh, do some work on the wings as I'm doing it because it, it's the body the main bodies and where the the join I want to keep the um, keep the positioning of everything I don't want to lose that um, I don't want to have to trust to my drawing ability which whilst I think it's quite good <laughs> Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to find halfway through a, a carving piece that I can't actually reproduce it on the carving. I'm being a bit over cautious, I guess, because I'm. I'm almost certain I can do it, but. It's more about confidence than anything else. And it is kind of weird doing this on stream. I am less bothered about if I make a real mess of this. Well, you know, kind of, oh well. Which I'd be a lot, um, a lot more concerned about if I was doing it for myself. Just without streaming it. Okay, yeah. Must be um must have been a special mix of the flip paint though. Because it wasn't as though it was changing changing colours. It was you know, I suppose it was changing shades. Hmm, I don't know. It it was an absolutely <laughs> to see it was absolutely um you know it was uh, Say gobsmacking, really. It was uh, seeing it, that particular effect. I could, have, could hardly believe it. It, you know, it looked so realistic, and yet you knew it was a flat panel. Uh, that's his. That's yeah. Right. Let's go down some more. We've got a lot of space. Let's use it.
I'm getting a better idea what I'm trying to achieve, <laughs> which is uh, enables me, you know, because I've got that more of that picture in my head, I can uh, start to to be a little bit more um, bold about what I'm trying to do. I think I could do with giving this little tiny chisel a little bit of a polish. Uh, I'm not, well, whilst this will end up sharper, I'm kind of not really sharpening, as most people would think of sharpening with a stone. It doesn't need that amount of abrasion. So the the polish, which is, is an abrasive, is enough to just apply a really sharp edge to these uh, tools. So if you're not seeing me do this before, I'm holding the tool at an angle to the uh, to this leather strop, dragging it backwards and turning it at the same time because I'm, I've got here a u-shaped gouge so I need to have the same sharpness all the way across the edge and you got to more or less keep it turn keep turning it um, as you do that because and that's a full 180 degrees because the sides are part of the with the gouge. The sides all the way up to the very top here is part of the cutting edge. So I've got to go from there all the way through to that 180 degrees. All while holding it at the correct angle. <laughs> and dragging it backwards. I know this is, is a particularly sort of tricky thing to do, so I'm doing it quite a few times. Now what I'm going to do is make sure I take off. There's a little, bit, a little tiny burr inside here um, because it, the, the edge is so fine. It's, it's a bit like tin foil. It curls up. So I'm just going to put a little bit of abrasive on a tiny profile here. Turn it over. This is just a wooden profile. And Ow! and drag it back and it's sharp. I've actually just <laughs> I can see it. I've got a little I've just jabbed myself but I didn't penetrate the whole skin which is a good job but I have got a u-shaped uh, little cut on my finger just right in there Dot. the camera won't focus on it I don't think but um, yeah Got to be careful. These tools are sharp. Now what was I doing? Oh yes, I was going cutting down in here. It's not. Uh, let's try with this. <laughs> almost, almost. I 
doesn't Danish design, uh, define it though as um, without um, signif a significant injury I don't think he counts it um, even when it draws blood I suspect his definition mean, of it is if I didn't have to go to, to hospital then it, it's not an injury Take this down a bit more here. You do, uh, uh, me doing this, I'm bearing in mind that these wing membranes will be taut, st you know, stretched very tightly, basically. So everything will be sort of slightly curved but straight lines, if that doesn't sound contradictory. If you think of an umbrella, how the uh, if it's if it's really taut, you get like a, a, a U shape, and the, these wings are the same. But essentially, you know, it's going to go from from here, this elbow, if you like, uh, in a straight line to wherever it's affixed to. You know, it won't have a sudden bump here in the middle. Uh, or it won't it won't be lower here and come up to a a, a higher point on the back trailing edge here of the membrane because there'd be nothing to hold it higher. So if you sort of understand that sort of anatomical thing, and I've no idea how you know much about anatomy, but if you understand those sorts of things, sometimes it can uh, it can help you. Because you you can visualise what you're trying to achieve, but sometimes you'll carve. You know, you may well carve things that ana like anatomically may be impossible, but they just look right. <laughs> and if it looks right, that beats what it should be, hands down. Uh, okay, that's his definition. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if it's his left hand, if it's his right hand, he can't. He, I don't think he can use his knife in his left hand. So, right. Take this side of the membrane down as well. And then I'll follow it with the arm in a moment. Remembering the arm is a bone, so I'm going to have to go... Effectively, when I finish this, it'll be almost a straight line from the body to the elbow. Um, I think the the arms are sort of slightly... The bone is slightly curved, you know, and that sort of thing. So I can I can take a, take that account, but essentially it's it's a straight point to point thing. Don't need to worry too much at this stage with stop cuts and and making them going deeper than I need them to do. Uh, but as I get closer to the final final depth, what I don't want to end up with is like I've got here at the moment, which is a cut line, uh, because it's it'll stand out. It stands out as a dark dark a dark shadow almost. So as I get to the final. Uh, 
final shape if you like what I want to do is not so much create a stop cut as create the sliver that I want and then just cut that off gently so that I don't actually uh, crease what's underneath um, that way you, you don't get this the um, so I just do something like that which is and probably sharpen the chisel when I do it before I do it but just just enough just to break off the uh, the bit of wood that I've uh, you know curled up uh, what's to go mm. I'm now just studying the depth yeah uh, don't quite know how much depth I'm going to need to round the body off so let's do some body rounding Yeah, I need to go, that's not bad, but I need to go lower because I want to get the, the back ridge in a little bit. So, um, actually, let's let's create a bit of depth for that back ridge. I know that's, I still want to go further down. I haven't decided right where this arching is back up like that so this area is uh, yeah, it goes like that for want of a better description I think it probably probably does slightly um, so it's kind of rearing up almost So that's not a bad shape. It's not a bad shape at all. Um, a bit, uh, bit difficult to see. Um, hmm. oh dear. Let's see if I can show you what I'm looking at. Let me just unclamp it for the moment. is an opportunity actually to get rid of some shavings it's also going to be an opportunity for me to close the window um, but if we sort of look you now start to see we're starting to get you know sort of a broad back and, and side sort of shape around here Sorry about the uh, the camera flashes, by the way. For some reason, it seems to do that. I don't know if it's overheating, but it doesn't like that particular focal depth. Um, you should be able to get some sort of in an idea there. This, uh, we're now starting to come uh, across the back and down the side. And that's kind of, that's kind of the shape I want to achieve now. If I want the back to be concave like this, um, I need to be a little bit lower uh, to achieve that, I think, but not much lower now. As you can see, the sort of depth we've got available here. The next, the, the head is, is going to be the highest point, so again, that's the reason why all of this lot here is to, to drop further down into the piece as well, because he's, he's got his head 
you know, looking back, uh, which would tend to, um, you know, if if he's on, if he's stood on a rock like this, if you like, uh, in this sort of position, and then his head is going to be slightly more vertical. So that's kind of the um, kind of the effect I'm going to be looking for. And then you know this is back feet stood on the pinnacle. So yeah, that sort of thing. Right. Let's clamp this back down again, and then I shall just take a moment to close uh, a window and a curtain, and then uh, we'll continue. Don't need much clamp pressure, I don't want to damage the wood. Just saw some something which yeah I I made a little while ago so uh, but this came out of a kit by the way <laughs> so I didn't actually carve that but uh, a wooden Spitfire can't really get it all in all in view without moving the camera but uh, it's amazing how you can put wood together without any glue or um, nails or anything and get some fairly complex shapes. Um, the propeller is supposed to turn slightly, but it's locked in place, but quite a realistic shape. <laughs> it can go back where it lives. And we'll carry on with the dragon. Thank you, eighty fall guy. Um, for, yeah, the, the 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 generally commercially available kit is that. Uh, it's already pre-stamped and everything. You just push it, push the bits out, and uh, and then they just all sort of clip together. Right, I want this to go down uh, quite a bit more, so more, so more. Okay.
Yeah, that's probably about as far as that can go down before I don't want to go any deeper than that. I've now just this side of the membrane here. I've just cut it down to probably about a third of the depth from the top to the base. And bearing in mind that um, the uh, the wing membrane on the reference picture, but if you think of it like a bat, it sort of about a third to a half the the side of the body uh, where the membrane joins so um, that looks about the right sort of position now if I have to go down any further than that because um, it whilst I'm relief carving <laughs> I'm kind of doing semi three-dimensional carving um, in that this is a whole piece is almost stood on the background rather than um, rather than in the background like the, the rose for example which you've seen this is very much in the background you know it's it's a, it's a slice taken off and, and stuck on to the background for want of a better description which is a very good relief um, this is this is still relief carving um, but it's it's deep relief this is really shallow relief normally ideally somewhere in between of course but I yeah I do like to get that three dimensionality in so this is sort of deep relief carving um, so it will tend towards being uh, if you were to draw a mouse for example the mouse would be sat on so his four paws would be on the base um, and that's almost a three-dimensional carving just stuck down um, I'm not going quite that far but that sort of um, sort of idea deep so that that's just doing a measurement that distance uh, about that so yeah a bit more to go which I can see when I look at it but. so I'm coming to what hopefully will be the final depth so I create that sliver of wood and then cut down to chop it off rather than doing it the other way that way I don't actually dig as deep down into the wood I've got a slight mark there but very slight nearly how are we doing with depth we shall have a look in a moment Clean up around that area there. By much, but it is a bit deeper. That's there, oops, that's moved there. Here, yeah. I could get a micrometer out, but all I'm doing is uh, just you know, if that's the surface, I'm putting the chisel on there, putting my nail on the chisel and holding it like that so when I come to the other side I can feel that it's not not the right depth it's looking close but not quite mm. 
what I will have to remember is if he's got a curved back ultimately and I'll probably have to carve it more towards the end is this membrane will also be curved to match to match his back so you get a wonderful compound curve one of those very interesting things that's nice and easy to carve <laughs> said with a lot of sarcasm as you might well have gathered <laughs> Now that looks about right. Then I'll do the same thing again there and there and there and yeah, that one's a bit deeper, a bit more. That looks to be about it. And of course I have to remember, as I say, the back's curved, so it will be a bit deep here anyway. But I can adjust that afterwards, potentially just by sight. And then we take the arm, because the arm is, whilst it's supporting the membrane, it is only just slightly above. You know, it's like your own, um, uh, your own bones, if you like. Uh, you know, they, if you if you were to do that and pull the skin out, it's just uh, the bone is just slightly uh, above the skin that you're pulling out, or with your fingers or whatever you can see how it just very slightly is uh, is is higher and yes I know I wasn't showing wasn't pointing at my knuckles there Now, having made a decision on the uh, where the the wing membranes are, everything else kind of has to match to it. You can't put wood back. And I said because the bone is only just above the skin, the membrane. You want to be fairly close to the same height. Now this is a lot wider, you know, the, the arm and space I'm leaving here is, is a lot wider than I actually need. But it will give me the uh, ability to, to shape it into uh, a round sort of bump for want of a better description right so that's quite quite deep there so what I can now do is do some shaping of the body around here I do is start by just shaping it flat 
before I then start to put the, the curve of the back in there because I need to lower this whole body down. Actually I might have to take the wing membranes down further. I'm still trying to stay fairly localised to where I am and I'm not uh, you know I'm carving just a small area here trying to get this to something I like I'm not trying to join it into the rest of the neck or anything like that at this stage do it the other side. Could feel as soon as I tried then to calf on the other side that it just that was the wrong way to to do this area. So either you guys are totally fascinated by what I'm doing or um, you're busy watching about three other streams at the same time. My guess is the uh, the latter. <laughs> but I don't mind if that's what you want to do. Um. It makes the um, the Twitch stats graph for, uh, for for chat activity rather flat, as in right across the bottom. <laughs> I don't take a fantastic amount of uh, well, just just my job makes me interested in the stats, and they seem to be playing about with them. Um, but uh, I find it uh, I find it fascinating to look at them, but I don't take much uh, notice of them. And there are some of those stats that I just cannot work out how on earth they actually work out what they're supposed to be. The other thing I find funny is they must have they must have separate collect, uh, collection jobs running or something for collecting the various stats as well because 
they don't always well quite often they don't agree with each other you know it'll, it'll do something like say there's been nobody watching me tonight um yeah i had you know 10 concurrent followers or 10 concurrent viewers or something like that and you think mm, twitch you want to start out your stats as well as start sorting out ingest and playback for the UK and Europe. <laughs> I take it everybody's managing to uh, to see the stream tonight without too much of a problem. Eddie, you seem to be the one, not Eddie, uh, Free, you seem to be the one that seems to have most um, difficulties with uh, with watching me. Is it um, performing for you? I've had my own feedback window wet freeze once. Okay, what we could do with doing now is working that a bit more into the neck, I think. Bammy, I, I say, I say, uh, F13R, uh, Pfizer, F -I -F -I -S -R, Pfizer, F1, F3R, F13R, not sure how you'd like to be uh, known as. Uh, welcome, thank you for following the studio this evening, that is absolutely fantastic of you, I do appreciate it, and I'm glad you're enjoying what you're looking at. Um, I mentioned sort of Twitch stats. I wasn't actually meaning for you to all suddenly start talking, but that's what happened. Uh... Oh, you've ordered some new. You, you, you're getting the um, you're getting the flat uh, versions, are you, uh, Eddie? I did think about ordering them as well, but. Mm. I thought I'll try them and I spent enough. Oh, even better if the um, if the business all, all out of the business bank account, then you uh, <laughs> no permission required. Oh dear, Arif Mayer, good evening. Welcome to the stream this evening. You just like having that's okay. I mean, I've just. Uh, It just struck me as being funny, but uh, you know, from that point of view. But um, you know, people, uh, I, I, I know I like to see at least some activity in chat sometimes. Um, just to know that you know, um, I'm going to still continue, but you know, you all guys may have fallen asleep, or you know, Twitch may be ingesting, but um, not actually outputting anything anywhere. It wouldn't uh, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, zero problems and Captain Derby, welcome. Good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Sorry, I didn't see you a little bit earlier. Yeah, and I'm not quite sure how the nylon tips would do um, as well because you know they, they'll. Um, I'm not sure how they'd hold because nylon actually is also. Um, if if the nylon tips were on, were on parallel jaws, it wouldn't be so bad, I don't think. And, and there may well be some. But with uh, uh, on this sort of jaw, because you're holding a round object, nylon is quite slippy. Um, I know this doesn't go in there, so um, it would be of a tendency because it's quite slippy to um, to push it away. So I don't know. I was just thinking of it, obviously, from the point of view of not scratching things. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay, you know. I, I know that I frequently, well, I always watch quite a, end up watching quite a few channels, and sometimes I just can't be bothered to... Uh, I'm just you know, chilling out as the uh, description goes. 
it's nice to just watch kick back and uh, and watch without actually actively having to get involved in discussions because I know I kind of I kind of hate going to streams where that sort of thing is, is being forced it's all right when it's um it's a natural sort of discussion going on or whatever but when when it's being forced it's a bit meh I kind of <laughs> oh, which reminds me. Um, I kind of wondered uh, whether or not it it would be half possible to get sort of like a, a new uh, electrical or a pneumatic um, operated uh, one, just to, you know, for the, for this hand, if you like, just to hold it in that position with with electrical or pneumatic jaws. So that you just use a foot switch, you know, and it, it closes, and then you've only got to use one hand. Because I kind of find, you know, I don't know about you, Eddie, but my left hand is the one that took the... Mind you, there again, I was, going to, I was about to say, the left hand took the force, but the, it did because I was using my own uh, instrument pliers in the right hand. Uh, so my left one was was working against that horrible spring. Um, I saw somebody else doing it last night. It was about one o'clock in the morning, and I'm trying to think who it was. I don't know if you've um, saw somebody else doing um, chain mail jewelry, which I might as well do an advert about here, and that is to talk about uh, for those people who may be new to the stream. Uh, there's a couple of people in stream who do stream. That's a lot of streams. Um, the couple of really good uh, streamers in the stream this evening that I know of there may be others and you're welcome to say if you are but there's that 80 fold guy there who makes chain mail jewelry that's uh, out of anything from large to little tiny large as in large to little tiny rings uh, forming all sorts of jewellery items, necklaces, chains, uh, bracelets, uh, bag charms, dice bags or coin bags or anything else that will go in a bag with holes in it. Um, <laughs> and uh, keychains and you know, sort of this thing that you clip to your belt and clip to your keys so you don't lose them. Um, and, and anything else that he can can think of. So an excellent one to watch. And 3D Bloke um, there, who is an airbrush artist and sometimes works with a heavy variety of stick, you know, the paintbrush stuff. Though less so these days, I understand. Um, you, what are you having a go at tonight, um, 3D Bloke? Because I think you decided you were going to uh, put aside what you were doing last night for another night. Um, but uh, both of them, great uh, great streamers. I thoroughly enjoy watching both of them. Luckily for me, they both, don't both stream at the same time. Although 3 does stream at the same time as somebody else I watch, so I kind of end up watching two streams at once. Uh, but uh, I rec you know, recommend checking both of them out. They are absolutely great arts and crafts to watch, both of those. Um, yeah, who was the other one I was watching last night? I suppose the easiest way to do that would be to just look at my own follow list. So if I who am I following? Uh, that what tell me I need to go to my profile page, I think. And yeah, Mr. Boom Batty. Uh, Eddie, Mr. Boom Batty. He seemed to be streaming about one o'clock in the morning, so he's, um, I'm guessing he's probably an American. My ability to tell accents is terrible, so I can't can't tell from uh, from listening to him. But uh, he was doing some uh, jewellery last uh, last night. Okay, um, hmm. 
I'm going to have fun just around there. The, the wood was not real happy about me cutting it in that direction. See what doing this has done is—is uh, is it's. I wonder if I've got a piece of wood that's thick enough. Um, this is kind of may may wonder what this piece will be like in full 3D as a full 3D carve. I'm kind of wondering uh, uh, yeah, at some point whether to try it. Are you going to work on the xenomorph? Okay. And um, that hearthstone didn't seem to be too bad. Of course, you know, you, you you've got the um, you've got the image, but it doesn't have to be an exact match to it. Um, I know for the hearthstone purists, it probably does, but it's a deck of cards, so you know, couldn't there be a different deck of cards at some point? Disturb Siren 6, at least I could pronounce that one. <laughs> Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for following. That is most excellent. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying what you're uh, watching and or hearing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think in creative, uh, that happens a lot. We, we do watch each other's streams. Uh, quite a lot, but uh, I think that is because of what y what you do is what you're interested in. You know, so you know, we're, we're all interested in in in, in cr a lot of us interested in arts and crafts and you know crafting or whatever like this, and you kind of can appreciate the art or the you know the practice, the skill that goes into it, and. Uh, and like watching it and therefore you know we we do tend to hop around and and watch our uh, each other's streams or alternatively it could be you know like that old saying i love work i can watch it all day <laughs> is a little bit of shoulder and a little bit of neck just around here judging by where the uh, where the arms are yeah and that arm has got to be straightened out otherwise it will look odd um, but we'll get to that Trying to work out is now the transition from the neck, which is um, the head's the highest point, sort of, uh, because it needs obviously to be three dimensionally carved, at least on the top. Um, there's a smooth transition, sort of, from the neck, the head into the neck, I think. So it's kind of like a lizard, sort of uh, neck. Uh, that comes comes round from the neck, uh, so you've got like a smooth transition all the way down into the shoulder. Now, so the head is kind of the highest point, so I've got to come down away from that to the shoulder, and then establish the curve of the back and possibly possibly a curve up to to the back feet, or maybe I'll take them down a bit further. Well, I will take them down a bit further, but I can I, I can either curve upwards or I can just curve down and, and further if that sort of makes sense uh, I don't see, well 
I, I um I, I don't uh, I don't particularly watch people playing um, games these days so I, I gather he does play games but because that's he, he was um, he got a uh, what it some sort of uh, team he got some sort of uh, either Skype call or something going with somebody talking about playing games um, another streamer I think he was playing a game at the time I don't mind watching Elite Dangerous. I'm not I'm not particularly a fan of a fan of it though. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. If it doesn't look right, it's it's hard to. It then becomes hard to see past that. And I don't want to take big chunks off of this and I'm, I'm sort of shaving it down because I don't actually know how far I want to go down. So I'm just just kind of you know if I shave it down I can I can stop. If I take a big chunk off and it's too much I'm stuffed. One of the nice things about um, one of the nice things about um, Anne McCaffrey and uh, Michael Whelan's imagination, uh, imagining of her dragons, is they're uh, smooth-skinned. <laughs> they don't have scales, which of course means. <laughs> It's a lot easier. <laughs> I won't have to put lots of scale details in and I can just carve to smooth wood. That wasn't why I did it, I just liked the dragons, but uh, yeah then that's Yeah. Just imagining the backbone coming up to around to the head. So it sort of curves just off there, and that that area there is the backbone going up to the back of the head. Okay. Just laughing at myself then. I did kinda of didn't have that for you guy you two guys, eighty four guy there and three D block. And uh, completely forgot to say something like yeah, and if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow me. <laughs> oh dear. 
so I've just done it. <laughs> um, but if, if you are watching and if you're not particularly partial to carving or you sort of just it's all right um, I do do other things as well. I'm not quite sure I am as multi-talented as uh, Free described me the other evening but um, I, uh, I do pyrography which is um, using heated tools somewhat similar to this one uh, which are electrically heated to actually um, and I do remember your comment free to actually uh, create a colour it doesn't burn the wood it, it causes the the sap or the um, oh whatever a word but it effectively causes the 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 liquid that's inside the, the wood cells to come out and be cooked and, and sit on the surface and, and the cooking turns the uh, turns the liquid a brown so you're not actually or i don't actually burn the wood um some people do but um so creating images using using heat a heated tool like this and free the other night was suggesting that when i've done this i might want to use do some pyrography on it I could actually, I wouldn't be doing the dragon. Um, actually, I think you also suggested airbrushing it as well. Um, but I wouldn't, I, I might do his, do his eye, but that would be all because the dragon's a white dragon. So you'd be doing the background. If I was to airbrush it, then it would be interesting. <laughs> uh, but uh, White dragon, blue sky, rock. Hmm. I don't know, might try it, I don't know. I quite I quite enjoy seeing pieces in raw wood, so I'm not sure whether or not I actually would like to uh, to airbrush it or not. Yeah. It may well be that I'm just um, not interested from the point of view of... I mean, I suspect I probably would be um, if I actually started playing it. You know, fly, flying the ship, if you like. Uh, I'm not I'm not necessarily sure I'd want to get into the combat stuff, although I know you're forced into it sometimes. But rather play the trading and exploration. But... Um, I half suspect that I'd, I'd like it so much that I wouldn't do anything else. And yes, I've got quite a few uh, stacked on Steam as well, well, well Steam uh, as well. Not too many, but uh, and some are just you know retro installations, so like the Mist games, for example. I have on there. And I'm waiting for their new one, Obduction. But that won't be until next year. Um, but yeah, too many games. And, and certainly since I started streaming, too little time. I like doing this too much. Whether that will change in time, I don't know. By this I mean streaming, whatever it is I'm doing, the art stuff. Uh Yeah, I matched it. <laughs> okay, you might want to be a bit careful how you say that, Abhishmaya. <laughs> um, but uh, cool, if you can create a, a, a wooden object that actually works, that's even uh, more uh, amazing in a way. But uh, okay, have. Um, Have a good uh, good evening, good night, uh, Avif Maya. Yeah, I slept in this morning as well. Not good. Um, that's one advantage of working from home most of the time, is the travel time to work is seconds. Uh, but have a good uh, have a good sleep, Avif Maya, and I look forward to seeing you on another another stream later. Right, this next shape is starting to take a little bit of shape, if that's not a contradiction of terms. The 
There should be some creases in it, I guess, but because it's quite it's quite a twist, but I might forego the realism <laughs> for just something that looks nice, a serpentine uh, smooth neck. Yeah, I do like that shape. It's a nice shape. I'll, well, I'm gonna say naturally, yeah, the S shape is a is a is a natural shape that lots of people find they like. It's a natural body shape as well. Is the S curve, which has probably got some. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's probably part part uh, part of the explanation as to why it's such a pleasing shape. So as you can see, I'm kind of just using this as you know, shaving almost with my fingers. There's no there's no real need to apply great big. Yeah, heavy pressure with this. The wood carves nicely, so what I will want to do it. At over time is just um, you know make it so it's a nice smooth transition no no knobbly bits basically uh, that doesn't look too bad the Brilliant Bacon! Welcome! Good evening! Welcome to the studio this evening. Or welcome back even. Nice to see you again. And I agree with the sentiment. The Brilliant Bacon. Lovely stuff. Now that I've started to establish a shape and probably a final depth somewhere around here, I can now start to carve out from it. Well, that's that's kind of how I seem to work. Is I've got something that works, and then I work my way out from there. tend to do something similar with, with pyrography as well. Establish a rough outline and then start at one particular place and work from there. And in pyrography you're establishing, a, you know, in doing that you're establishing a colour or a shade and then uh, working from there. Actually I was telling everybody what else I did, wasn't I? I stopped, uh, got distracted. I also do scraper board. If that's something that you're not familiar with now what it is, is it's, it's, it's a piece of card which has had um, porcelain clay rollered onto it so it, it's a thin but very flat layer and then once that's dried it's had a layer of black Indian ink rolled over the top of it so the board itself looks black when you scratch it using any sort of sharp tools um, the white of the clay shows through and depending on how you scratch it, the depth, the width and uh, how close scratches are together for example you can get quite a, a pleasing shading effect and you can create images from that 
I also do Punchcraft, which is um, a bit like a, uh, well, it's a bit like rugs are made. You take a needle, um, rather like, well, this is this is one of them, a large needle, and uh, you thread thread through it, and then you punch this through a, through a fabric to create loops on one side. And you can, uh, by varying the colour and the depth, you can create a picture and sculpture on the other side. So that's uh, another art form that uh, you will see me do from time to time on stream. So that's four. Yep, catch you later 3D block. Have a good stream. It also means it's coming up to um, time for me to start uh, to wind down. Uh, yes, yeah, so carving, pyrography, uh, scraper board, and uh, punch craft are the four that I uh, I do at the moment. Uh, in a few weeks, a couple of weeks or so's time, we'll probably add a, at least one more or two more to that. I have um, some, well they're not perla beads, but they're plastic uh, beads that can be fused by heat. Uh, sat across the uh, across the studio. Uh, when I can think of something to, uh, to do with them. Um... And then there's another uh, another craft which um, is kind of has been done on stream, but is currently uh, under wraps, shall we say, until uh, uh, some presents which have been created using it have been revealed to the recipient, who may or may well not be listening at the moment, which is why I'm not saying what it is. So. Check back later, folks, for uh, for details of that. Or alternatively, go watch AD Fall Guy, who already does that in an excellent way. Although he's not on, he's not streaming at the moment. I do occasionally just dot about um, doing some of this just as some some area catches my eye like I got some rough wood just underneath there which I thought if I get rid of it it'll just look a bit nicer I'm quite enjoying that shape <laughs> you will see me do this a lot just stroking the wood uh, it's it's there's a couple of things it's just tactile to start with you know, to, to touch and especially when it's smooth but also using your fingers you can tell where it's smooth where the high spots are the low spots and whether something just doesn't feel feel right um, and that joint there isn't right I know that's gonna I've got to I've got to take the joint in yeah I've got to take the joint I must remember that um, it's not stuck on the side, it's part of, uh, a part of the dragon, so that wing has got to go a bit lower still in order to come in and join with the body. So at some point I have got to remember that that has to join into the body. So let's start and that's going to prove interesting. I might have to use a different, actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to need to possibly do a little bit of carving around here using this gouge, which will prove challenge a little bit of challenging. But it's because it's because it's a small. Oh, I could do actually with a small. Uh, uh, I was going to say a smaller flat chisel, but I uh, yeah. and the U shape kind of is like that, but. I'm just going to do is carve using the. I have a tendency to carve using the right hand side of the chisel, but of course, all I need to do is carve using the left. Uh, 
Um, let's take the arm down a bit more first before I do that. Which means I need to take that membrane down a little bit more there. Come back to that in a in a minute, but I need to give myself a bit of depth there, and I need to give myself a bit of depth on. On this side, uh, let's do it like that. May well have just may effectively made a mistake, forgetting that. Um, of course, the the wing bone is like your shoulder; it goes actually into the body. It's a fairly substantial bone as well, so. I mean, effectively, the bone when it, when the dragon's flying, of course, the bone has to support the whole body weight. I'm just thinking about what to do with these wings at the moment. I've got to make this bone sort of flat, um, but I've got to join it into the body. And of course, I've cut a bit too much there, so uh, in you know, too much of a valley, which effectively means I've got to carve the back down a little bit because this is this should this should have, uh, have joined in. You know, your you, your arm isn't stuck on the side of uh, isn't sort of stuck on the side of your uh, shoulder. It's part of your shoulder. grain is going to get me here. It is. Because on this side I can't carve that way because it will just pull up the uh, it will pull the wood up and create um, uh, it, it'll, it'll, it'll split the wood basically and make my problem worse. Thank you, Eddie, for that. That's uh, kind of you. Yep, yeah, and I do recommend that you watch him. I will be doing so. Uh, you, you're going to be streaming tomorrow afternoon, Eddie. I can't. I can't remember. So was it Monday? Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday during the day. Uh, I know we won't be able to watch you on Thursday afternoon because I have to go into the office. Uh, 
Alright, so... At least I've dis de determined here what the the critical point is, and this is the, this is the critical point at getting now getting this um, shoulder. Good job I, uh, I did this at this high level rather than uh, carving down any further as I uh, was starting to uh, to do so because I'd have continued to make this cut and it doesn't look natural. easiest way to do this is going to be to take this and do it like that. I'm using a U-shaped gouge. So what I'm going to do here is basically just shave away material from both sides because the size of the chisel will do it for me. Until I'm uh, the bottom of the chisel is cutting um, in cutting the wood underneath it which at the moment is a groove so once I start to cut the wood underneath it I'll actually create a u-shape which will be smooth which will be what I'm what I'm looking for Is a, a smooth transition from the body uh, to the to the arm joint. And let's give this ch chisel a sharpen because it's not uh, responding very well. Okay, well, maybe well, tomorrow night and th and Friday, then I shall perhaps see you later. Good evening, have a good night. Thank you very much for stopping in. Oh yes, you said you were having yeah, yeah, and Murphy, of course. Ah oh, well, I shall see you tomorrow night then. <laughs> And then we'll turn this one over and just run it over there a couple of times. Myself a bit more space. There we go. Is that this? Is that a smooth transition there? Well, 
Not quite. Okay, that should be enough for me now then to carve into the wing belt. Uh, so that's going to transition like up to one side there. Like that. These wings are too high, they'll need to go down more. They're, they're, they're held too far back like this. So at least I've got plenty of material to uh, to work with. So the whole the whole wing has got to come down. It, it's at the moment it's it's held too far back. Um, see if I can work myself to a, a level I'm kind of happy with. Well, because I forgot that the arm has got to go into the body. Let's see if I can shape that a little bit more as well. Uh, Poker Ranger 69, welcome to the stream. Good evening. Nice to see you again. Thank you for dropping by. I made a little bit of a, a boo boo with the dragon here. Uh, which I'm glad I rec realised at this stage, but would be a bit more awkward. And that is, of course, the wing, the arm bone, has to go into the body. You know, so it's actually got to go in, not and it, it's the skin, of course, will go over, over the joint. So I've got to just create that joint between the body and uh, and the wing. Luckily, I've got enough material to be able to uh, to deal with that. I hope, in a way, that looks okay. And guys, if um, thank you for <laughs> thank you, just Jessup. Good evening. And guys, if you don't know um, Poker Ranger sixty nine. Uh, I suggest you do check him out as well, another streamer. Uh, Perk Ranger 69 though is a glass artist. So blowing and or forming glass uh, into whatever he wants to make it into. <laughs> uh, this guy has quite a lot of talent uh, with molten glass. Absolutely fascinating craft to watch. I highly recommend you check him out.
<laughs> Thank you for your confidence in that, uh, just Jess. But as I say, I did. Um, I have almost messed it up. I've now got to integrate this arm into the body, rather than it being just stuck on the side, which is kind of how I had it. Ah, grain of wood. Why couldn't you go the other direction just at that point? I'm going to have to carve just down this this area here at least at the moment uh, in the wrong direction which means I've got to be really 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 careful about wood splits but I just can't get an angle on it in the in the direction I would like to carve it When you when you're going at the wrong uh, you know the wrong way to the grain, um, you've got limited control over what the wood's going to do. I could actually do with a little. Well, I could. You can get um, these tools which have um, got a, a ladle effect or a spoon where they're canted basically. Uh, depending on the depth that you want which gives you a little bit more leeway to get in because I can't get it in in this area here because the body's in my way uh, so I'm having to resort to working at an odd sort of angle Um, that's going to need to go down a bit further, but not much. What I'm doing here is, is I've got a notch in here, um, which I've got to basically uh, carve out so that the arm looks doesn't look to stop here. It actually looks as though it goes into into the dragon's body. So I created I created a smooth transition from the body to 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 the uh, to the arm using the U gouge, U shaped gouge. So now what I've got to do is carve carve this side of the channel of the of the U shape away so that I, I hit the bottom of the U shape if you, if you can imagine that and that way I get a smooth transition into the body. And I've got to do it on two sides as well. So I've got, I've got, you know, like the, sh I come up to the shoulder basically here, and I come under the armpit basically around here. And that's the kind of shape I've got to achieve. Okay, this needs to go further down. I'll deal with the rest of the arm later. Also remembering, of course, that this is a bone, so it's 
it's basically straight is the bone Now it can have a little bit of a curve on it but it's got too much of a curve at the moment um, and now what I'm starting to lose is my shapes around here so I now need to switch out tools and just put some of these shapes back in basically the edge of the arm here and then along the fingers so I can see where they, where they are Now, I'm not doing much work around here, um, so I'm not. Don't need to um, re-highlight this too much. Just cutting it down a little bit so that I've got uh, some sort of marking. Okay, what that will allow me then to do is to shave this down some more without now that I'm losing my pencil marks I can now I can see where it's meant to be because of the shapes I've carved the rough shapes I've started to carve in there um, Not so bothered about the uh, the lower arm at the moment. Let's establish the side of the arm again, just around there. Just so I don't lose the positioning. We can actually smooth the membrane out later.
Right, well, we're, um, we're getting back in there, but this wing now has got to go down quite a bit more because of that mistake. Uh, the whole the whole wing area has got to go down. What I should have done is start more or less carving it into the shoulder, like this one is here, almost joined in. Carving it in at that point, as I started to carve down, instead of carved the body and uh, forgotten to to flare, it, it's a flaring uh, out into the into the wing shape here, or into the arm shape. And it's really close, but I'm gonna. What I'm gonna have to do is take this wing down. It's probably gonna be a, a flatter wing. This one I might have more curved, um, but it's gonna have to now go down quite a bit as well to to match the same depth as this, because obviously it comes out at the same point of the body. Um, so this this will end up being a little bit less. I was uh, it was working. It's starting to look as though it would be quite a three-dimensional object, but it now I've having made this mistake, it's it's going to sink further down, and be more two and a half dimensional. But uh, let's just before I lose where it is, just put some markings in here. That's just the edge of the arm. Roughly, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a rest. Yes, it could look like a seahorse, I suppose. Maybe that's the subject for another. Um, I, I should write that down. In fact, I will write it down in a minute. Um, that sounds like a, a, a nice uh, subject to do for another carving, actually. So we may well uh, may well do that one as another piece. Thank you for the idea, uh, just Jessup. Eighty fall guy. Okay, have a good evening. Well, have a good night and uh, see you tomorrow. Um, Super Saw. Hello, welcome to the studio this evening. Unfortunately, I am going to be wrapping it up now. I have messed up a little bit. It is recoverable part of the learning process um, too, I was too focused on the nice smooth shape and forgot the uh, forgot the smooth shape should come this way as well but you know we'll uh, we live and learn and that's the whole idea of this and uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes I mean it will still turn out I'm hoping to be uh, to be nice and if all else fails we'll turn it into a seahorse <laughs> cut the other wing off completely uh dear, no, we'll try and avoid that. Um, but I am, uh, I am going to stop for this evening. I think having messed up, done a little bit of work to recover, I need to have a drink and settle back and uh, relax. Watch a couple of other streams, including 3D Bloke, who will be around somewhere. Uh, see what happens. Hey, good evening. Sorry, Chris, but um, I'm just about to go. You caught me just as, uh, mind you, you're probably been lurking, I suspect, but um, I, uh, I've messed up, started the recovery, you know, done it all in camera, so you guys are seeing it as I'm doing it, making a mess out of it. Hopefully if you ever try carving for yourself, you'll, um, you'll not make that mistake uh, f uh, in your own piece. But, uh, you know, such is life. It's all part of the fun of carving. But uh, as I say, I'm going to have a rest. I've been doing this now for two and a half hours. I could do with a cool drink. Uh, watch a couple of other streamers. And uh, and then uh, calm down before I go to bed. So I want to say thank you to everybody who has watched this evening. Yes, it's feeling a lot better. Thank you, uh, Just Jessup. Um, that's uh, very kind of you. And Super Saw, thank you. Um, you haven't worked on Mega Man in a while. Um, what, weren't you working on on him yesterday? I could have sworn I was watching you do it yesterday, Chris. But they're uh, uh, in. <laughs> Chris is potentially just advertising himself there, but that's okay. Uh, Chris is another uh, awesome streamer. 
he makes um, 3D sculptures out of pipe cleaners um, bits of wire that are fluffy and are really floppy uh, and he turns them into freestanding sculptures he's got a dog a giraffe and he's currently doing a Mega Man and to give you uh, to, to make it even more awesome the giraffe and the Mega Man are both a, well the Mega Man is he's working on but the giraffe's about five foot tall and so will be the Mega Man and they will stand by themselves awesome work Okay, must have been the day before then, uh, Chris. Um, I, I lose track of days sometimes. <laughs> Memory and save and, and things like that. Uh, but I am, you know, I am, really, I've got to say good night to you guys. Thank you, uh, everybody that's watched. If there's anybody watching who isn't following me, I, I do, of course, encourage you to do so. I would like it very much if you did, but if you don't want to, that's okay. I don't, uh, I don't mind if you don't want to. Um, but if you do follow me uh, and would like to, you know, obviously, that's because you'd like to see what I'm doing. Then hopefully Twitch will uh, tell you when I go live if you follow. But if you don't trust it to do so, you are also welcome to follow me on Twitter. At Zaragon Art is me, and the the details are down below the stream window if um, if you didn't get quite catch that I don't tweet a great deal I essentially if you take a look you'll see most of it if not all of it is saying hey I'm going live that's about the only uh, only tweets I send out so you won't be inundated if uh, you do that keep all my tools in a leather pouch look after them they'll stay sharp um, but if you just want to try and catch me on my next stream, which will be tomorrow night, I stream, generally speaking, seven nights a week from 8pm in the UK. That's 1900 hours GMT. Or if you can't be bothered uh, asking Google uh, what that is in your local time, if you look at the clock now, subtract two and a half hours, that's what would be 8pm in the UK. And that's the time I would start streaming. So that's that's the advert over. Thank you all for watching, and uh, look forward to seeing you on another stream. Good night, all.